Hey, hello and welcome back and today we're looking at how to enjoy video media on your Synology NAS with DSM-7. Much like the other videos in this series, I want to talk you guys through how to set up your Synology NAS at the very best way the very first time. I'm not going to be including anything to do with uh, remote access via the internet as mentioned in previous videos. The reason I'm not touching on that is because in the settings menu you do have the option to do that, taking advantage of something called called uh, Synology Quick Connect, also in conjunction, I recommend, with a Synology account. However, I don't recommend doing that until you've set up your NAS fully over the network and got all of your security and settings and everything done first. Doing that, um, you know, allowing internet connectivity to your NAS before you've set it up perfectly is not something I recommend. And that's why, although in this video I will talk about how to stream and enjoy media on your NAS, I'm not going to include remote access. Although, all you need to do when setting up remote access later on, when you've set up a Synology account and enabled the Quick Connect service, is once you've got your Quick Connect ID, which will be in this box, all you have to do is utilize the Quick Connect ID and remote access link that it gives you in the same way you'd use your IP. But that's enough of that for now. Today I'm going to guide you through two main ways to enjoy video on your NAT. I'm going to be showing you how they work and in one case take you step by step through how to set it up. I'm going to be looking at the media server casting over DLNA using the media server application that we've talked about in both the photo and the video, um, um, the photo and the music um, video prior to this one. And I'm going to be looking at Video Station, Synology's own premium application for enjoying video media either over the network, on your desktop browser, on mobile devices with an app available for iOS and Android, and even an application on Amazon Fire Stick. So there's lots of different options open to you there. And at the end of the video, I am going to direct you, direct you towards some great resources in order to enjoy it. So first and foremost, let's have a look at how to prep your NAS for video. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your video is in the right locations. So, on the control panel area here, if you head down to the bottom while going into the control panel, you see an option known as indexing service. Select that, and from here, you will be asked at the top to let the NAS know where certain media types live. So, go ahead and select indexing folder. Now from here it will ask you it will give you some preset options for video, music and photo. These are the default directories that will appear as applications are installed in the NAS here on the file station application. If we open it up by default over here you'll see that I have a video folder, I have a photo folder and a music folder. All of those added by default. But you can add other ones as well. These folders will allow the NAS to know that there is either photo, music, or video in different locations. So, for example, clicking Create, give it a, an album title. We'll call this one Films. From that, you would select the folder, say where in the NAS it lives. So, in my case, I'd go Share Test, go into one of my albums here and select Movies. And then from there, I'd highlight that this folder contains music. And there you go, I would click OK. But I'm not going to do that, but that is what you would want to do in your own setup, as I've already added this album. However, bear in mind, just the way it tells you, the changes you're making here do not affect Video Station. These apply to up, uh, UPnP and DLNA streaming. That's Universal Plug and Play and Digital Living Network Alliance supported devices. Now, I have covered these tools already in the previous video. So I'm going to go into a very small amount of detail on them here. But bear in mind, if you look at my photo setup video for Synology DSM-7 and the audio, I go into more detail. On the package center, go to all packages and on the drop down, select multimedia. Here it will list the available multimedia applications. The ones I recommend you installing are Video Station, as that's the best application and a very, very present alternative to the likes of Plex Media Server. For a later video, I will show you MB Media Server, which is a great tool, which is, although not featured in this video, is still a great media streaming tool. I would also recommend Media Server, that I'm going to show you in just a moment. 
and I recommend installing the advanced media extension if it's not already installed. Uh, this will allow the system to um, play other media types which otherwise it would struggle with, such as HEVC or highly efficient video codec, also known as H.265, a common component of HDR media. Make sure you've got all or most of those installed, then you can head into your applications available and Media Center will be available here. Media Center accesses the contents of your NAS um, or displays the multimedia on your NAS via DLNA and UPnP to be accessible via other DLNA or UPnP supported devices such as consoles and uh, media boxes, uh, Chromecast, phones, tablets, PCs, audio streamers and more. Lots of these settings are fairly self-evident, such as which network port you want to utilize and what you want to browse, and again, whether cover images will be utilized, whether information will be displayed as title only or more, whether you want the information to be displayed in its original format, so such as do you want to use certain codecs, all of these can be configured within the media server. Just bear in mind that DLNA factors little to no transcoding of video and is more focused on audio when it comes to the conversion or changing of files. The Media Center application will be available on the local area network very easily, but it's worth highlighting that some devices by design, such as Amazon's Fire Stick, do not feature DLNA media streaming by default, preferring you to use internet-based streaming services. For those, I recommend accessing, uh, go to Google and find the following guide. Head online and look for the top five apps for NAS and Amazon Fire TV over on NAS Compares. The URL is hopefully linked in the description below, otherwise a quick Google should present you with this article. This lists several uh, apps that you can install on your Amazon Fire Stick to enjoy files on your NAS. So for example, Synology have their own DS video application that connects with the video application on their platform. But if you're not going to be utilizing DS video and you want to access files over the network as a DLNA media server, I recommend VLC Media Player. It's a free application for Fire Stick that allows you to browse files on the NAS easily. There's other paid applications that support multiple file types, and of course, you have the likes of Plex Media Server and Kodi, which do require a slightly more complex installation, which luckily I link to at the bottom of that article. And there you go. That's how to enjoy media over DLNA and a media server. But what about Video Station? As you can see, Video Station utilizes a lot more graphical information. It's available, as mentioned, as an app on Fire Stick, as well as being available for iOS, Android, and with client desktop applications too. The tool has a, the ability to create playlists, get cover information for media, so you're able to see multimedia, find out cast information, find out descriptions of the media itself, more information on the files, and even share the files as you see fit via public sharing and more, as well as information on the codec. You can even watch files via the web browser quite easily. And again, these files will be accessible nice and quickly, along with the ability at the bottom there to change the video quality on the fly and the audio quality if you choose to, as I quickly try to find a scene of this movie that won't get me kicked off YouTube. But, as you can see, all the configurations options are there, and similar configuration options are available on the web browser, as well as on the Amazon Fire Stick, and on the applications for mobile devices and more. You can stream and find metadata as well as adding home recordings and more. It's a great tool with lots of configuration options built in there on the background. Now you're seeing a completely set up version of Video Station. So why don't we reset Video Station now and from here I'll guide you through how to set this up for the first time. Let's remove the databases that I've added so far. So we delete, and what I'll do is I'll fast forward to video station being reset to defaults. So now I've reset video station to default. In order to access and configure video station for the first time, 
head to the video station icon here on your list of available services on the NAS. Once you click that, it'll open in a new tab like so. As you can see, most of the information that was there earlier is now long gone. And what we need to do now is start creating our libraries. So on the left hand side of the screen here, click on movies if you want to connect with movies. Click the plus symbol and then where it says folder, click select. Now as mentioned earlier on, when you set up the uh, accessible areas on the control panel for what was going to be indexed by the NAS, it mentioned that video station would not be affected. That means that you have to now tell video station precisely where to look. Find the collection of media and where on the NAS your media lives, in my case my movies folder here, and add it. Say that you want to utilize it as a library, and then you can say whether it's a movie, a TV show, or a home movie. There'll also be the option of whether you want to utilize video information, which is something I'll show you in just a moment. When you're ready, click OK. Repeat the steps for different kinds of media that you own, such as TV shows. Again, with TV shows, you can go ahead, find where you've placed your album of TV shows, which again, it's recommended that you select the tree above. Don't select individual ones, but the main folder, and it will scan the contents, and then click OK. Again, clicking OK there. And then slowly, it will scrape the metadata and find all the media on your NAS and add it to the collection. As you can see, it's indexing. If you want to add a new folder, go ahead and click the plus symbol and either give it an existing name or a brand new one, such as in this case, I would put 4K 1080p test files, which I use for my Plex testing. Then click OK. And then on that folder, once again, click plus and give it a directory. So again, I'll add that now as the system slowly indexes the media that we've done so far. And then click OK. So as you see in the TV shows folder, it's found our movies, it's found the TV shows, but a lot of that lovely pretty information we had earlier is not available. That is because this information needs to be scraped online known as metadata, the NAS needs to be connected with some of these services. Now in order to do that, head up to the cog at the top right of the screen. From here, you'll see the albums that you've created so far. At the top, head over to Video Info Plugin, and you'll have a drop down here of the Movie Database and the Movie Database TV. What you need to do is head over and put a tick in the apply box. Now when you do it for the first time, you'll have a pop-up on screen where you'll be asked to enter an API key. Now an API key is effectively a verification code that allows you to connect the Synology NAS with those online services. I recommend utilizing TMDB. It's a completely free service which allows you to sign up and therefore go, when you've created an account, head into your account here at the top, go into settings, and head down here in the API section. If you click here, it will generate an API code or ask you and guide you through the creation of an API account, uh, an API link. It's very straightforward, and there's a guide here available on the Synology Information Center, as well as another guide on NAS Compares that will guide you through how to scrape the metadata at no cost and add it to your NAS. Once you've got your API key, you enter it into the pop-up window that would appear here. And once you've done that, click tick next to the folders that you want to scrape the metadata and click OK. This will allow the NAS to now start accessing the online resources and start scraping metadata for these files. If need be, you can rescan the database at any time. The amount of time it will take for the system to scan that metadata will differ depending on your setup on how and how much the NAS is doing, but it can take upwards of 30 to 60 minutes depending on the size of your library. Again, we can head in check out these libraries, edit them, and double check that the sources have been set up, as you see there. Again, click OK, and as you can see, it's indexing. 
And this is how we force the system to index if we don't want to wait for the system to do it manually. Again, you can force the setup, go ahead, click OK, and there you go. It's now forcing the system to do the indexing, which may take time. As you can see, it started indexing that information. We've already started here with black books. It hasn't got the cast yet, but it's got the images and the series information, as well as the titles of every episode and the description of each episode. And slowly but surely, it will scrape all of that metadata for every source. It just takes a little time. Now, for those of you that are going to be sharing your video server with other users, it's worth remembering that you can configure a number of the options up here. Many of these options are not available on the client application, depending on whether you're using a phone, a tablet, a Fire Stick, a desktop. You can only really configure the full spectrum of control here on the desktop via your web browser. Although the mobile application for iOS and Android does feature most of the options, such as creating parental controls that restrict some folders or some certifications and more to be restricted in certain ways by adding a pin code if you choose. On top of that, you can add other video identification sources if you choose, which again will be pre-downloaded in zip or tar form, which you can get from other online movie collection databases. If you are utilizing a digital tuner, you can connect that to video station to live stream and record video services. Just bear in mind that you will need a supported DVT function and antenna and digital aerial to connect with the device utilizing those internet stream services. And again, you may need to utilize an existing online uh, authentication key to utilize them as well as contact information too. You can change if you choose the privilege information to individual users that you have on the system. So if you don't want them to have access or at least not have access to the control of the device, it can be tailored there. In the advanced tab, you can um, connect with online subtitle databases as well as some of the conversion settings for particular client devices. You can also micromanage a lot of the transcoding that can happen in the background automatically rather than configuring them manually within the playback window as I'll show you in just a moment. And finally, you can choose what is displayed on the video station user interface when you set it up as well as when you're accessing it remotely on certain devices and of course show indications of what you've watched and what you haven't very similar to that of plex media server now more metadata has been scraped as you can see here and we can go ahead and for example look at a film now soon it will scrape the information on different actors at the bottom as well but if we play back this file it's worth talking about that if we choose to, we can change files on the fly. If you're watching a video file and the quality is too low because your network is quite thin or that it's having difficulty playing a file that's too heavy in quality, head to the cog at the bottom and then go into quality playback and it will allow you to change the quality easily. You can change the audio to different tracks if you have different ones supported add subtitles from online services, change the player mode, and more. All of these options readily available here, with most of them available on all client devices. Typically, Video Station will play back a file at the best possible quality by default. It won't try to play back a file heavier than its boot, and if it can play back the original quality on the client device with no restrictions of supported file formats or network traffic, it will do so and you can add it to favorites and more with the options there on screen. Once again, I strongly recommend checking out the API key guide at Synology and on NAS Compares, as well as my list of supported network playback devices available on that guide that should be linked in the description. But otherwise, this has been the best way to enjoy video on your Synology NAS using Synology appliances. Bear in mind in our next videos, we will be looking at Plex Media Server how to install it on your DSM-7 equipped NAS, as well as talking a little bit about MB Server as well. So I recommend checking those out, because as good as Video Station is, Plex Media Server and MB Server have just got unique services that aren't available anywhere else. And although they're third party, they're still especially good. So I recommend you check those out.
But thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, click like. And of course, it helps me understand what I'm doing right so each video gets better and better. If you want to learn more or stay abreast of new parts in this series, click the subscribe and the bell to be notified. And of course, you take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares linked in the description. It allows me and Eddie the web guy to dispense free advice to anyone that has data storage or network storage needs be they home or business. It's completely free and manned by two humans who do nothing with your email. It just might take us the next day or so to answer so many inquiries. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.